The Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act of 2008, or GINA, prohibits discrimination on the basis of genetic information in health insurance and employment. Title II of GINA prohibits employment discrimination and is enforced by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. It became effective November 21, 2009. The final regulation implementing Title II of GINA was issued by the EEOC in 2010 and went into effect on January 10, 2011. The regulation can be found at 29 CFR Part 1635. Title I of GINA deals with health insurance and is enforced by other federal agencies. Congress enacted GINA in recognition of, among many achievements in the field of genetics, the decoding of the human genome, and the creation and increased use of genomic medicine. What is genetic information? Genetic information has a specific definition under the law. It includes not only information about the genetic tests of the individuals and their family members, but also information about an individual's family medical history, among other things. The regulation explains the full definition in great detail. The regulation also provides numerous examples of genetic tests. For example, a test to determine whether an individual has a genetic variance associated with a predisposition to certain types of breast cancer is a genetic test. Other examples of genetic tests include a test for a genetic variant for Huntington's disease and carrier screenings of adults using genetic analysis to determine the risk of conditions such as cystic fibrosis and sickle cell anemia. Title II of GINA includes three basic prohibitions. It prohibits the use of genetic information to make employment decisions, restricts acquisition of genetic information with limited exceptions, and requires the genetic information to be kept confidential with limited exceptions. There are no exceptions to the first basic rule of GINA, which is that employers and other covered entities may not use genetic information to make employment decisions. This is because there are no circumstances under which someone's genetic information is relevant to their ability to perform a job. It would be unlawful discrimination if, for example, an employer refused to select someone for what they felt to be a stressful position because they learned that her father died of a heart attack at an early age and were worried about her ability to handle stress. The second rule of GINA restricts the acquisition of genetic information by employers and other covered entities. The general rule prohibiting acquisition of genetic information states at 1635.8a that covered entities shall not request, require, or purchase genetic information of an applicant or employee. There are six narrow exceptions to this general prohibition. It is important for employers to train their staff on these rules because the fact that an employer accidentally acquired genetic information of an applicant or employee is not a defense to the unlawful acquisition of genetic information unless one of the six narrow exceptions applies. One of the exceptions protects employers and other covered entities who inadvertently or accidentally acquire genetic information. The regulation provides many examples of what inadvertent acquisition looks like. For example, a supervisor will receive genetic information in response to a general inquiry about the individual's or family member's well-being. For example, how's your son feeling today? Or did they catch it early? After being told about a family member's cancer, the answers to these questions will involve family medical history, but the inadvertent acquisition exception prevents the employer from being found liable for acquiring this information in these circumstances. Another possible unintentional acquisition of genetic information discussed in the regulations involves employers who lawfully request health information, for example, in response to request for reasonable accommodation, and receive genetic information in response. This type of acquisition will be considered inadvertent if the employer warns the employee from whom they are seeking health information that genetic information must not be provided to the employer. The regulation provides model language for an employer to use, which can be found at 29 CFR section 1635B1IB. If the employer's own doctor or agent is conducting a medical examination, the employer must ensure that no requests for genetic information are made. As explained in 29 CFR section 1635A8D, every employer must tell their doctors not to collect genetic information during employment-related medical exams. 
This alters the rule that previously existed under the Rehabilitation Act, which allowed any type of disability-related inquiry or medical exam after a conditional offer of employment has been made, as long as everyone applying for the same job was treated the same. In addition to the inadvertent acquisition exception to the general prohibition against acquiring genetic information, there are five additional exceptions. The other exceptions include acquisition through a health or genetic service, such as wellness program when certain strict conditions are met, acquisition of a family medical history, one type of genetic information, through the FMLA or a similar leave policy, acquisition through commercially and publicly available documents, such as newspapers, acquisition through a genetic monitoring program regarding the biological effects of toxic substances in the workplace, and acquisition through DNA analysis for law enforcement or forensic purposes. The third basic rule of GINA is that employers and other covered entities keep strictly confidential any applicant or employee genetic information of which they are in possession. This means they must keep genetic information in medical files that are separate from personnel files. There are six narrow exceptions to this rule, which are explained in detail in the regulation at 29 CFR 1635.9.